Hi, this is Sean from the BW Group, and these are the top mistakes to avoid when looking to choose a realtor to sell your home. Mistake number one, choosing a realtor based on the price they recommend. Many homeowners make the mistake of listing their home with the broker who tells them the highest list price. Sadly, this is the oldest tactic in real estate. Tell the seller what they want to hear, give them lots of compliments, tell them their home is amazing, it's just to get the listing. Instead, you should insist on a well-researched property evaluation to help you determine a realistic list price for your home for today's market. This will also help you select the right pricing strategy. You should, you should select your realtor based on their credentials and then decide on the price. Never select a broker based solely on the price they recommend. Number two, choosing a realtor based on commission. Well, Keep in mind the lower fees may mean that the broker is either spending less time helping you or less time on marketing or both. You'll want to choose a broker or a team with a solid marketing plan, great negotiating skills and a proven track record with the experience to handle problems when they arise. Remember, it's not what you pay but how much you end up with in your pocket that counts. Now, to help you navigate this when you're interviewing a few different realtors, we've given you a few questions you might want to ask when interviewing, interviewing somebody for the job. Number one, do you work on your own or as part of a team? If the broker you're interviewing works as part of a team, it may be that he or she will not be the only one handling the sale of your home. Now that can often be an advantage as a team can usually offer a higher level of service, but not all teams are created equal. You should know upfront exactly how the team functions and you should be able to meet the other brokers and support staff who'll be working with you. The last thing you want is to be involved in a confusing team situation when you have no idea who your main point of contact is and everything keeps changing on a daily basis. Number two, you might want to ask them, how many clients are you currently representing? Now there's no magic number here. If the number seems super high or super low, consider both of those a bit of a red flag. You obviously want someone with a thriving business, but someone who still has the time to devote to guiding you through every step of the way and to make sure that you're, they're helping you with all those important decisions. If they're rushed and they're dealing with 150 different clients, obviously you're not going to get that personalized service. Question number three, how many homes did you sell last year? This will give you a good idea of the volume of listings that a real estate broker or team is used to handling. This number alone is not enough to base a decision on, but keep in mind that a very high number may mean the broker is not able to give each client as much personal attention, whereas a very low number could be a clue the broker is perhaps not a listing broker and works primarily with buyers or is just not a top performer. Asking for a summary of sold listings with the average number of days on the market and a list to sale price ratio is a good way to gauge their track record and efficiency. Question number four, what's the price range of most of the homes you've sold? you probably already have a ballpark figure in mind of your home's value. Does the broker you're considering typically represent homes in that price range? If most of their sales are in a far higher or far lower price range, they may not be as familiar with how to market your home. Something to look out for. Number five, how many homes have you sold in my area? This is an important one. If the broker, has no, has, if the broker hasn't sold many homes in your neighborhood, they're probably not as familiar with the local market and probably don't have a solid network of buyers. Knowledge of your neighborhood and a good relationship with other local real estate brokers is a huge asset that is often overlooked by home sellers. Question number six, what steps will you take to determine the market value of my home? The realtor you choose to work with should ask you detailed questions about the age and condition of anything that could impact the sale price of your home. This includes things like the roof, the heating system, the windows and doors, as well as any repairs that may need to be done on the home. And they should also have this information for all the comparable homes currently listed and recently sold in your area. Be wary of a broker that just looks around your home, pulls out a few comparables, and then throws out a price without having done the proper homework. This will greatly increase your chances of making a critical pricing error. Question number seven, how will you market my home? There is a lot more to marketing a house than putting a for sale sign on the lawn. Do they offer home staging services? Will professional photos be taken? How about 3D virtual tours? Will they be creating floor plans? Are they going to do a, a property video? In addition to Centris, how many other websites or social media channels will your home be featured on? What strategies are they going to use to attract the ideal buyer for your property? 
A good marketing plan can be the difference between an effective sale and a home that languishes on the market or sells below what it could have. Great marketing equals great sale prices. Question number eight, what are the negatives of my home? This is an important one. You're not looking for rainbows and unicorns here. Any broker worth their salt should be able to name a few potential drawbacks to selling your home, from repairs to location to decor. That being said, you will be spending a good deal of time with your real estate broker, so seek out someone with a realistic but tactful approach. Question number nine, what type of support staff or resources do you have at your disposal? This could include anything from admin support, professional photographers, stagers, videographers, contractors, tradespeople, assistant brokers. All of these professionals can offer tremendous value to the process. A well-supported broker will have more time to generate qualified buyers for your home. So there you have it, folks. There are a few things to keep in mind when interviewing a real estate professional to sell your home. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let us know. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.